Hey guys, just wait till we get a few more people um, joining us and then we're going to bring Luna on tonight, Luna Hendricks, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm sure all of you have got lots of questions to ask Luna, um, as do I. So I'm really excited to have her join us tonight um, and very excited to hear all your questions and I'm sure Luna's excited to answer them all. Um, so yeah, just give me two minutes and we will get Luna on with us. I hope you all, it's been a busy week here at Sheik's Board. Um, so yes. Hi Luna. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And you? Good. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm really excited to have a chat to you. I think we have a lot of questions. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. So how's things? Yeah, I'm still skating. So I'm happy. We, we have the opportunity to skate outside. So I saw your post a few days ago. It was like minus six or something. So yeah. I think <laughs> temperatures are pretty low, but at least you've got ice. That's a, that's a positive. Um, yeah. So we're really excited that you could join us tonight. Um, got quite a few questions for you. Um, so yeah, we will try to get through as many as possible. Um, but yeah, just, we're going to go through like the general skating questions. I'm sure you've answered them a hundred times over, but I'm sure we've got a lot of people on here who would love to know your story and know a little bit more about um, you and your background. Um, so yeah, when did you start skating? How did you start skating? Tell us about that. Um, I think I was around four years old, so really small. Um, I yeah. started skating because of my older brother, Jorik. Um, yeah. He wanted to, um, to skate, to, um, to join the ice hockey club, but he was yeah. still on and um, then they said like um, you first have to try um, you have to learn skate and hard to skate yeah and um, that's why he still uh, fi uh, he stays he stayed at figure skating yeah um, yeah I was a little baby and I went to the ice rink as well and I think yeah yeah. I remember you. I remember you being this little four year old. <laughs> uh, when I was I wasn't already obviously in Belgium, but I remember I used to come to the skating camps, camps in turnout and I think I think the first time I met you you were about five, maybe five, six years old and you were literally just taking your first steps and I remember you in this little like bright pink dress and like bright orange hair bubbles and like everything was bright colours. Um and I remember you as a very, very, very little little girl so um yeah did you always did you when you started skating did you fall in love with it or did you just do it because your brother did it no of course I fell in love with it as well uh -huh. um I wasn't a fan of the cold because I was always crying because I was cold and but then um yeah at at an age of, of six I started really liking it and yeah, yeah I'm really <laughs> I still still am yeah. either so yeah I mean we got to deal with the cold that's one of the disadvantages of skating unfortunately and especially the ice rinks in Belgium because they're absolutely freezing <laughs> and turnout especially was yeah. absolutely freezing so um yeah I can understand that so yeah so when you started did you always know at what at what point in your career or as a young child did you have the Olympic dream like when did you kind of realize like that you wanted to do this like really seriously um I I have a really first video of it I think it was um in an interview of uh of Kevin yes um and it was because of my brother Jorik he was competing at a higher level like Europeans worlds and yes I really was looking towards him and I, I wanted to do the same and then yeah. he went to and then we made a, uh, a goal together to go to the Olympics in 2018 and yeah that was just a dream come true so yeah it's a it's quite a exciting and it's a very unique story as well um that the two of you so who other than obviously your brother and that who inspired you because obviously skating is a very very small sport in Belgium 
it's not like huge you don't have a a lot of skaters i think you're probably the most successful for sure the most successful female figure skater that belgium has ever had um and like who who inspired you in a sense like aside from your brother like who did you look up to as a girl or a skater in that period of you growing up who did you look up up to um a story that um that still is in my head is the story of Joanne Rochette. Yeah. At the Olympics, it was really heart touching. And, um, but for now, I think I'm looking up to Carolina Kostner. Yeah. He, she's at, at a higher age, but still competing at a really, yeah, a really high, really high. So, uh, yeah. He, um, like a second Carolina Kostner. Um, yeah so yeah okay cool and um, so tell us about your training at the moment so obviously there's been interruptions with COVID-19 and it's obviously not been an ideal situation because yeah the rinks are closed and they're open and it's limited ice and you're on outdoor ice there's there is events there isn't events like that how is the uncertainty of all of that in the past 12 months how has that affected you have you had you know, have you struggled with it mentally or, you know, have you just got a goal in sight and you're just focusing towards that? How do you, how do you cope with that at the moment? Yeah, so uh, the first week of the lockdown, almost one year ago, I could rebuild skating again because as many of you know, I was injured for a long time. Yeah. And I could start rebuilding, but then there was a lockdown, so it's... Um, it was like three months later I could go on the ice. So it was really hard, but at the same time, it was like a relief because um, I couldn't compete at the Worlds. And at that time, nobody could. So I had a little um, hope. I don't know how to yeah. say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the same situation as me. And uh, at that time, I really started to work hard and make my body strong. And then after those three months of the ice um, and I could start rebuilding it on the ice. I was so happy. I've never been happier before to uh -huh. just skate without yeah. doing anything, just skate. I was so happy. And then, um, yeah, I could do a first competition in Budapest. It felt amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there, the competitions went a little bit down. And then it was mentally hard because, yeah, I didn't compete for uh, a long time and I didn't compete a lot. So I really wanted to have a season full of competitions. So yeah. uh -huh. it was really hard. But now I'm, again, looking forward to my next competition. So, yeah, yeah I, think, I think for a lot of people, like I spoke to some of the other girls and, you know, I think... It's always to just not knowing when is going to be the next events, and you know you're trying to put it in your head, and you know you're trying to focus now on worlds, but there's still that uncertainty. Like, is it or isn't it? You know, and I think that's I think the uncertainty is a difficult part. But talking a little bit about your injuries, Luna, because I think a lot of people um, would be very interested. How did you cope? Because obviously you you suffered a lot from injuries in your career, and you're still so young. Um, how has that affected you and how do you feel like, um, do you feel like that's made you a stronger athlete? Because I feel like watching you, every time you come back from an injury, you're even hungrier and you're fighting even harder. And I think like every time you just get stronger, whereas with other people, you kind of see them coming back from an injury and they're kind of like, their heart's not in it anymore. It's like they're getting tired of this setback all the time. But with you, I feel like you just come back even hungrier each time. You just want more. Yeah, I think I think it's just because of the love I have for figure skating. Um, the, my first um, really big injury, uh, I was off the ice for half a year. And it, re it made me realize how much I missed it and how much I wanted it and... When I step back on the ice, yeah, I cannot, I cannot tell how I feel because I was just so happy and and yeah, and just happy. grateful that you could ski it. Yeah, yeah, and, and you can see that in your performance too. I think you can see that you were, you were just grateful to be there. It was like 
-hmm. you did you weren't putting pressure on yourself you were just so happy to be back out there and you just wanted to show what you were capable of i think i think as a as a spectator and from the, this side of it like we could we could see that in your performances so i think that was really nice to to see because obviously injury is a nightmare for any athletes and it can come mm -hmm. at any time so i think you've had your fair share of it now i think i think yeah. going forward <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there hope there'll be, there'll be no more of that. Um, so the World Championships are hopefully coming up. Um, as far as we're aware at the moment, the World Championships is, are going ahead. Um, has your preparation for, in, for the World Championships been affected? Do you plan to go there? Um, how, have you got a plan in place of how you're going to approach the World Championships? Or are you just going to wait a little bit longer to see what's going to happen? Um. I'm rebuilding my programs um, for a week now, so I'm skating it full um, from this week. Yeah. So, um, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw your video, like, yesterday, was it? Like, the run through, and I was like, oh, God, I don't miss that part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss that part, rebuilding them programs. <laughs> so it's already the fourth time this, this season I have to rebuild my programs because I... I um, I turned my ankle again after yeah. back, and then I had like back injuries and now, yeah. now and, it will be good and uh, in two weeks I will have my first competition in Den Haag. Ah cool, are you going to skate in the challenge? Oh that's exciting, that'll be good and it'll be a nice warm up yeah. uh, for the World Championships too. Yeah that's really cool. Um, yeah so what is your ultimate goal? Obviously, so I'm just getting up the questions. Um, obviously, next year is a big one. Again, the Olympic Games, and obviously that's one of your main goals. And I mean, tell us first um, how it felt to compete in Pyeongchang. How did that feel like? Because how old were you? You were 18. 18, 18 years old, yeah. So how did that feel as an 18-year-old to be out there competing? I mean you've competed with the best in the world and you've beaten the best in the world. So how does it, how did it feel to be at the Olympic games and really competing at the top of that category? Before I arrived the Olympic village and all the Olympic things, um, in my head, it was like just, uh, the same as the Europeans and worlds, but when I arrived, <laughs> such a different feeling. Because, yeah, it yeah. was, it wasn't just only uh, figure skaters, but it was... Yeah, everything. Everything's just so big and there's just yeah. people everywhere and yeah. It's... And normally I arrive at a, a big competition like three days before the competition. Yeah. But I was there already for two weeks before I co could compete. So it was a really strange feeling and also mm -hmm. the, the thought of um, having Olympics only um once a four year so yeah there's a lot of pressure and a lot of yes. different feelings isn't it it's like i mean i know like you say being there the whole whole time i had the same thing especially with sochi because i had the team event on like the first day of the olympic games and then the ladies event was like the end of the game so it was like two and a half to three weeks in between the two events so i i i know the feeling of that waiting and trying to keep in the zone and keep that focus for quite a long period of time um, and then you, you start to feel and think all these other things like again oh my god this is only once every four years and like I really wanted to work and and it's so much little demons in your head start like playing games so I think mentally it is a really it's a lot between the between the ears that's for sure and um, I'm just going to mention something Luna and um, we have a offer tonight that I forgot to mention at the start of the competition <laughs> So anyone that is watching, um, any orders that are placed between now and midnight tonight will receive either a free face mask or a free water bottle. All you have to do is just pop it in the notes section um, on your order on the website. So we'll be giving away a free face mask or a bottle. So please just state uh, which one you want. Um, and that's any orders between now and 12 o'clock tonight. I um, just thought I'd say that because I already forgot it. Um, yeah, so... Obviously, your goal going forward is Beijing. Do you see yourself going further than that? Because now you're, what, 22? No? No, I'm you 20, 20, You're 21. You'll be 22 in Beijing, right? So 
where do you see do you see yourself going beyond that another four years uh so after pyeongchang i was like okay there's is a lot um maybe afterwards i will see how my body feels yeah but now i did have a lot of injuries and i couldn't skate so i will go further for sure yeah i think i think there i think there's for sure more there than just one more year i think um so what's been your most other than the olympic games obviously and not not for everyone it's not always their their favorite competition or their most memorable what would you say your most memorable competition was and for what reason would you say um i think it was worlds 2019 in japan um for two reasons because um i was injured before i had a back injury and um i wasn't sure if i could make it to yeah. uh, worlds and um my coaches and my physio told me like yeah it's a really short time or will you um be able to yeah. get to the world championships and i said yes i will do it i will fight and and you will see i can do this yeah so um when i arrived there um i was really nervous because i wasn't fully prepared but yeah. the competition went very well it wasn't my best of course but i was really satisfied and just a moment after my performance i was so happy and and yeah, yeah. it was just amazing and the same moment yeah yeah you you could see it and it comes through like i said before in earlier on you do you get that sense when you watch you skate like obviously you're an amazing skater and there's so much to admire but you do get that sense of like fight and determination and you always seem like very humble and very grateful like like when when it does work or it doesn't work you know you always do get that feeling like that you are just so happy that you're there you're injury free well not always injury free but um given the circumstances that you're you've made it to the competition um which i th- i think a lot of your fans and everyone really do get that feeling as well which is as i said it's it's quite special because not everyone you don't always get that sense um when watching the bigger competitions um so what's your favorite jump um my favorite jump is triple flip triple flip okay cool i think that's probably because it yeah. was it was one of the first triples that i landed so uh, yeah okay cool um and then these are um what is your favorite rink to compete at um yeah japan for sure because the audience there is is so big and so so loud and they support yeah. you really yeah. feel the support of the people yeah Uh-huh. And don't you find in Japan as well like I always find when I compete in Japan in the Grand Prix or something like that um they they're so knowledgeable like they know everything and they're like you know they know when you you know you're they know the difference between all the jumps they, they they're not just like fans they actually understand the sport um that from a sense that you know whereas people just love to watch figure skating and they maybe come to an event but in Japan they like really really get it Um so I think that comes across as well in the audience if you're having a a bad skate or a hard skate they get behind you and you know they try to to push you as well so um yeah what would you like to do when you retire from skating have you thought about um have you thought about would you be interested from a skating point of view would you want to go into shows or would you want to do coaching or choreography or have you thought about it or um yeah shows would would seem very nice because uh yeah it's still your passion and uh, if you still can perform but then in a in a show it will be really nice and combine it with studies and um mm. and i would be a kindergarten teacher ah okay oh, okay are you already studying for that or is that something you're going to plan to do after after the olympics yeah okay cool that's exciting and you also do nails right Yes. You do nails. Yeah, I really really could be doing with you right now here. <laughs> I had to take mine off. They were a disaster. Um so yeah, we're all missing our nail technicians at the minute, Luna. So fingers <laughs> crossed uh this lockdown will be over very very soon. Um 
So let's ask you some questions about Chic Sport and then we're going to answer some questions because I think there's a lot of questions in the question box as well. Um, so what's your favorite Chic Sport color? Um, I think it's definitely red. Red, okay. Yes. And your favorite collection? Um, it's hard because I do like a few things, but it's not in the same um, collection. But I think the the Fierce collection. The Fierce collection. Okay. Yeah. And what's your favorite Chic Sport item? Like um, your favorite piece of clothing? If you could just take one with you to train in, what would it be? Um, I think for now it will be the Desire Half Zip Top because it's warm and, and yeah, we really need the warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would help um okay and what if you could name a chic sport collection what would you call it uh so i was thinking about it and um maybe crystal and then something with sparkles because yeah we don't need a an extra sparkle in the yeah. maybe that okay be a good uh Okay, maybe the maybe the Luna Hendrix collection. That might be <laughs> the Luna. Yeah, the Luna Sparkle. Well, there's an idea, Luna. We'll chat about that one after. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to. Um, if if we had an if we if you could create an item for us to release, what would that be? It, like something we don't already have out there. Um, I really like a uh, top with a real open back. Yep. Okay, so, okay, <laughs> good to know, good to know. Um, so let me just put the question box up because there's a lot of uh, questions. Um, have you done pair skating before? And if so, what advice would you give to your partner? Have you done any pairs before? No, never. No, no. me neither. So I, I can't really help on that one. Sorry. Uh, but just keep searching. <laughs> um, so no, I definitely... I'm not experiencing the pair skating. Um, what is your biggest target? What, so what is your biggest goal? So tell us what, what more do you want that you haven't already achieved? Because you've achieved a lot. Um, yeah, I really want to stay injury free and compete like a whole season again and just mm -hmm skating um, and still um, beat my own personal best and, and make my programs harder and yeah yeah just do I think I think as well like it's, it is a quite a tough question because you know you can only focus on yourself right so you can only control what you do and you I mean you cannot control what your competition will do you can't control what any other countries will do so i think it is really important that you do just focus yeah on yourself and you know like you say stay unhealthy and being able to compete at your absolute best and um, there's someone asking how old you are but i'm 21 21 um if you had to pick a color of swirl what would you pick Whew. yeah I I'm a really fan of pink, so, but yeah, you already have pink, but then I would say purple. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Um, how old were you when you started skating? Uh, four years. Four years. What is your full name? My full name is Luna Inge Patrick Hendricks. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that one. Very Belgian name, Luna. Um, so, do you prefer jumps or spins? That's a hard one because I both like them. Um, I'm good at spinning, but yeah. Well, you're pretty good at jumping too, Luna, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> so I don't but know. You, you are quite, you're, you're very, very strong in spins though. And you all, even as a little, I remember you, you know, growing up from, yeah, as I said at the beginning of the conversation, like five years old, I remember. And I remember like when you were trying this double axle for years and years and years for a long time and we could always see that that talent was there and your spins were always like way ahead of your jumps, right? When you were little, when you were very small, I'm talking like eight, nine, ten years old. So you were already doing these crazy Beelman and split positions and all of this stuff like as a little child. And I mean, 
it was quite, it was, and I always remember it, Kevin always said to me, he said, you're going to see the moment that those jumps are going to click, she's going to be like unbeatable. You're going to see like, it's going to, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. Um, and we were we, like, just waiting for that axle to click. And I think you were doing triple cycle clean first, right? In like, the junior grand prix before the double axle. Um, yeah, I did triple sal and triple flip clean before I could jump. That's Double axle, so <laughs> yeah, I remember it. So I mean, it just shows you that you know it's sometimes it's like you have that like that that some times that you have that block like of a jump, and then like you say, you just go on. Then you were doing salgo and flip before. It was like in less than a year, I could jump everything. So jump, yeah, exactly. That's what and that's what Kevin always said. He's like, look, she's so talented. Her rotation is so fast that you're gonna see the moment it's just gonna all click. She's going to be like way up there, <laughs> and he was right. Um, uh, let me see. Um, what do you do in your spare time? What do you do to relax and chill out? Um, I watch Netflix, and yeah, I I do nails. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like okay. to yeah to go shopping, but now it's online, so <laughs> yeah, I know that's the that's the issue, isn't it? It's like very very hard at the minute obviously to keep up a social life and everything like that too so um yeah it's a it's a difficult time for everyone um what would you say luna to like we have obviously a lot of followers and a lot of kids and adults and everyone who some people like message me and say like oh i'm really struggling like so frustrated i want to skate but they can't uh, what would you say to those people that like haven't been able to put their skates on again for another like, for a few months like what would you say to like the younger kids or the adult skaters or anyone else like who has such a passion for the sport um what would you what encouragement would you give them so it's a good sign that they are missing the ice um i would say just um make your body strong that from the moment you can go on the ice again that you're strong enough and then everything will come easily um, more easily and um, yeah you you will feel the love for for skating more than ever before so, yeah and I think you're right yeah. I think like to keep them keep yourself strong and fit and healthy um, whenever I'd spoke to Natasha she had also said like to keep a, a routine like try to keep a routine every day and don't get out of the habit of doing things um, I, because I think that will help as well but yeah. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. I understand there's a lot of people that are very frustrated at the moment. Um, Working out um, with your friends over Zoom and yeah, baiting each other and, and yeah. making... Yeah, I agree. Like, nothing lasts forever. I think that's what we all have to understand. I know it's almost a year that we're in this situation, but um, it won't be. It's not permanent, and it will eventually... We will be back to normal, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, Another question, what jump would you still like to learn? Um, so as my axle isn't my best jump, um, I, would, um, I would say a quad jump. Yeah. And um, for sure I'm struggling with triple loop. S super stupid, but yeah. It's no, it's not. I've seen your triple loop, Luna. I've seen it. <laughs> Sometimes it's like this, but most of the time I can't even rotate it. So I don't know. I, yeah. This was also the case with uh, I don't know if you if you know that with Yuna Kim, she couldn't. She, Yuna Kim never did triple loop. If you notice in competition, she never. It was the one jump that Yuna Kim never did. I mean, she was the queen of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, some people. Mine was a uh, salco. Oh. That was the bane of my life. Like when I first started doing triples, like I love Salco. I did like triple Salco, half loop triple Salco in my free program. Like I loved it. And then at a certain moment, it just became the devil to me. And I was like, I'd rather do two flips and two lutzes in my free than one sal. I was just like, oh, I hated it. Um, but I think it, we all have that one jump that's uh, <laughs> that's yeah. a pain. We can do, but it's obviously uh, a bit of a pain. Um, what is your favorite type of off-ice training and what kind of off-ice training do you do? Like what different variations do you do and what's your favorite? 
Um, yeah, I'm doing like um, on the spinner. Yep. The elite spinner. I yeah. really to keep my body straight and uh, good rotations. Um, I do like a uh, condition. Yep. Um, and yeah, to make my body stronger, uh, abs. Yep. And, um, I have like n new uh, new toy. Like I don't know um, if you know the blaze pot. Ah yes, I've seen the, I've seen you posting. Is it with the lights? Yes. So yeah, I've seen this recently. Yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah, it is really cool because you can do a lot of things with it, like apps, um, like for your condition to rebuild the programs, and yeah, all the stuff and reaction, and it it is it is like um, training, but more for fun. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to... How it's, to... A, it's brain training, and it, like you say, it's a bit more relaxed, it's a bit more fun, it's not like I have to do a 10k run. It's more fun, but actually it's probably as beneficial as some other intense training. Um, I know, like, working a few years ago, like, well, a few years ago, uh, I'm already retired seven years, that's how old I feel. Um, but yeah, when I in my last few years of training, um, I worked a little bit in summer camps with uh, Michael Huth, um, and he does a lot of this like brain training and coordination and you know reaction kind of thing so it kind of reminded me of a few things we've kind of done um, back then with that so it is again it's quite fun it's quite a relaxed but also um, a very important um, because we need quick reactions um, so that does make sense um, let me have a look is there anything you would change about skating um... I think that uh, that the artistic part will be um, the same value than the technical part. Yes. Yeah. In skating, it is like if you're a good technical um, skater, then the artistic part will come the same level. But it's yeah. not always the the case. Yeah, it should be, but it's not always. I agree, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and I think as well, when you come from a smaller country and not such a big skating country, that also has a disadvantage. You know what I mean, right? So, yeah. it, you know, it's, uh, you already have a little bit less of a, a starting point. Um, so, yeah, I agree that um, should be a little bit fairer and more mm -hmm. basic level on that one. We'll leave it at that. We'll not get into too much detail. Um, so, uh, let me see. We've got lots of questions in this box. Um, what boots and blades do you wear, Luna? Uh, I, I wear the Idea Icefly and the uh, John Wilson Blades Revolution Parabolic. Yeah, okay, cool. And quite a few, we've had quite a few questions, Luna, about how much on ice and off ice training do you do a week? Like how many hours? Like take COVID out of the question. Um, just on a normal training week, full, healthy, training week how much would you um i train on the ice between the 10 and 15 hours because um yeah i know my body is not um so strong to have more um more trainings on the ice so i compensate it with uh more hours of the ice yes yeah. like 10 hours of the ice as well yeah so that makes sense, yeah. I think I think when you do get to a certain age, like the off-ice training and, you know, a lot of people think that off-ice training is for the fitness and everything, which of course it is, but I think like the older you get and like the more, in, it's more about um, injury prevention. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important in skating, like to prevent injuries from coming. Um, and you can do so much of that, like you say, on like off the ice. Um, and it's better as well. I find like with me and my, last years when I was again struggling with injuries and um, it was better to have less hours on the ice but more quality training than so much training and then the practices were becoming a mess because you know you were half injured and you couldn't fully train on that ice so you're better knowing what your limits are and then um, you know sticking to that rather than trying to overdo it because otherwise it's one step forward and two steps back and um, so how did you combine skating with high school? Uh, so I went to a 
a school for uh for sport people in the Netherlands because yeah. um they didn't have the same system as they had in uh the Netherlands. So um I just could skate whenever I want. If I miss class, I would have uh like a class when I I have to for it. So it was a good yeah. system. Yeah, it's quite I think it was quite flexible, right? It allowed you to be able to you know, prioritize whether school was a priority priority that month or week, and skate likewise with skating. And I uh, went to school in Belgium as well the first year, and yeah, it was just like school from then to then, and you couldn't skip an hour for training because they they didn't get it. And in the Netherlands, they really get the sports. Yeah, in. yeah. So yeah, that's cool. It's good that you had that um, support and that you were able to get. Uh, the level of training um, that you needed and um, was able to balance it. I'm just going to mention again for anyone that is that has just come on about the offer we've got on tonight because I know it's been mentioned in the story. So any orders placed tonight between now and midnight, you can receive either a free face mask or a free water bottle. You just have to write in the notes section um, which you prefer. So let us know when you've ordered and just pop it in the notes section if you would prefer a free, free face mask or a free bottle. Um, so, what are you doing at the moment to keep up your motivation? In what would you advise any anyone else who's in your situation? How, how what would you advise them? I know we've we've talked similar about this um, a little while ago, but we've been asked the same question again. So I'm assuming that someone else has came on. Um, what advice would you give anyone who's struggling at the moment and isn't able to get the training that they would like to be training at the moment? Um, yeah, it's it's important to um, to stay motivated um, off the ice as well because um, when you train off the ice, your body stronger. Then once you came on the ice, will come on the ice. It will uh, it will make it much easier, and you will get. Um, sooner to the to the level you were before yeah that makes sense um someone is asking um where are you based at the moment for training and does that change in the summer period um so i live in belgium close to the border of the netherlands i train in the netherlands because um yeah i don't have a ice rink in belgium so close so i have to um to go to the netherlands and in the summer, um, sometimes we, uh, yeah, it changes every year. Sometimes we yeah. go um, over Zarev, yeah. Germany to uh, Turkey. And last year we stayed in Belgium because we couldn't go. Um, yeah. So, yeah. What? Well, a lot of people, and I know obviously a lot of people in the UK, and I'm sure we've got a lot of followers on from the UK, they probably wouldn't know is that in Belgium, all the ice rinks, and the Netherlands too, I think, all the ice rinks shut down for the summer, right? So that's like, that doesn't, I don't think that really happens anywhere else. It's the, When I came to Belgium, I was like, what? I was like, the rinks close? Like, yep, yeah, we shut in like May, and that's it until like end of September. And I'm like, what are you meant to do in, in the meantime? Like, so basically it's just, in Belgium, there's like, well, I know now there's like two ice rinks and sometimes half of the summer will come some more ice rinks back again. And there, are, there is a few more. But back when I started, there was just the one in Leuven and that was the only place you could get ice. So it was basically like fight for survival. Like whoever could get ice could get ice. And, you know, yeah. whoever couldn't. It was so crowded at that moment. Oh. So you yeah. Know, like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it, that's when everyone, it was funny because then everyone just started like leaving and going other places. Um, so basically it's kind of like everything's a bit disrupted in the summer for you um, and you have to basically search ice, whether it's in summer camps and stuff elsewhere. Um, whereas here in the UK, when the kids are off school and it's the summer holidays, they just, they get to ski it like twice as much. Um, but unfortunately in Belgium and that that's not the case because... They like their little holiday. <laughs> they like to have their summer off. Um, so, um, have you skated on any frozen puddles yet? No. No. I saw that there's one in Ghent, though. Have you seen it? 
There's a yeah. big one in Ghent. Yeah, I saw um, a few people had posted today on it, so there is one there, but... Yeah, it, no. it's, it's far away from where I live, so... Yeah, you're not so close to Ghent, but... No. Yeah, so you never know, there might be one close to you soon, but I don't suggest you wear your your no. actual ski. So if you do go on it, <laughs> I know you're not stupid, but just in case, you know, we don't want a drama just before Worlds. <laughs> um, in yeah. <laughs> um, who's your coach? Um, my coach from when I was uh, five years old is Karen Herregers. Yeah. And since two years now, my brother coached me as well, uh, Jorik Hendricks. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone probably knows Jorik. Yeah. So how do you find that, actually? Do you find it difficult? Like, when, not the coaching side, but when you were training together, did you ever find it difficult training alongside Jurek? Like, was it, you never find it like there was no, like if he was having a bad time or you were having a bad time, you know, did you ever have any issues with that or? I think we, we helped each other. If we had a hard time, we could um, yeah, cheer each other up. And yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how to say it in English, but um yeah, we helped each other. So yeah, yeah, never, like fights or anything like that. Yeah. yeah, and then as a coach, how do you feel it? How is it, how is it having your life as your coach? I really <laughs> love <it> because <laughs> he was at a high level, and I know he can. He really can coach very good, and he's so creative and all the steps, and it's just another. Um, it's just another. Um, kind of training with him than with Karin and yeah it's good to have a, a variation yeah definitely I think that I think we always need like and I know for me like with Simon and Debbie they they both brought so much to my training but in different mm -hmm. different ways like there was like different parts of working with Debbie and working with Simon that really really helped me so I get that um if you weren't a figure skater what do you what do you think you would have become I don't know because it was the first sport I did and I never did anything else. So, uh, no. No, I always wanted to be a hairdresser. Was, <laughs> I thought I was going to be a hairdresser, but never mind. <laughs> didn't, it didn't quite work out. Um, <laughs> let me see. Someone's asking again, what's your favorite sheet sport color? Uh, yeah, red. <laughs> red, yeah, we spoke about that. Um, if you had five minutes left on the ice, what were, what would you do on those five minutes? I didn't uh, understand the question. Um, if you would have like in the, in the last basically the last five minutes of a practice, what would you what do you do on the last five minutes of a practice? Um, yeah, it depends. Um, sometimes we do spins and sometimes we do skating skills. Yeah, just to try and take it down i'm just going to go back in the question box again because we have a lot of questions on here <laughs> um a lot of people asking again um why did you start skating but we obviously covered that it was because of your brother um so yeah otherwise do you think if if yorick had of um gone to ice hockey that you still would have maybe got involved with skate figure skating or um, yes, I think I think I would because um, I have three brothers and uh, the two oldest um, already were ice hockeyers and yeah. then figure skating. So I think if Yorick went to ice hockey as well, I still would try um, to be a figure skater as well. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just going through some more questions because there's... I don't think we'll be able to get them all, otherwise you'll be on here till tomorrow. Um, but yeah, a lot of people asking you, um, what is your favourite type of event? You're like a European, like a championship, Grand Prix, or the Olympic Games? What's your favourite type of event? Yeah, for sure the Olympic Games, because it's the ultimate type of competition. And it's just, yeah, you have like a, a feeling. Yeah, 
Um, and do you like do, how do you like the Grand Prix events? Do you like skating in the Grand Prix? Yeah, of course. It's... I loved the Grand Prix. They were one of my favorite. I think because it's such a small um, small group of people. I think it just be it's a really different feeling. Um, I really loved the Grand Prix. Um, I can't wait until like normality kicks in again, and you know we can get the the normal Grand Prix seasons back and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, what was it like to be the first ever Chic Sport brand ambassador? You were there from day one. What does it feel like? <laughs> yeah, it was an honor, of course, and and I couldn't believe my yeah, I couldn't believe it because yeah, it's such a a great opportunity, and uh, I really like the clothes. So yeah, yeah, we were. So we were excited. We were excited to have you on board, and obviously, we're still excited to have you. Um, and uh, we're excited to be able to, yeah, chat to you. And uh, we love seeing all your posts and your videos. And um, what chic sport? Is there any chic sport items that you don't have? Um, <laughs> I have a lot of chic sport items, but I don't think I ha I have them all. Um. You don't have the black inspire leggings, do you? Because they've been out of stock. <laughs> but they're coming back in. I, <laughs> I haven't forgotten, don't worry. <laughs> out of stock, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be back soon, I hope. Someone's asking how many Chic Sport items do you have? Do you have any idea? Um, I counted it like um, two months ago, I think. And I, I was like around... the. Uh, 125 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so you yeah. must have pretty much uh, pretty much everything <laughs> i think a lot of people you better lock your closet at night otherwise you might have a, a few burglars coming for you um what other stuff do you get for free by sponsors like from sponsors so what other stuff do you get sponsored um i got spark from 60 yeah the blaze bots I got for free um, and yeah from idea I got a lot of free stuff yeah and so, what about you got the we did the giveaway didn't we with pulse roll and did you get one of the pulse roll how, how did you find that yeah it, it's very small so I can take it with me to every training so I'm yeah. using it in every training and also to competitions because the the big foam roll is like yeah is take take with you to uh competition Events and stuff you've already got so much stuff to take with you so yeah so i've heard quite a lot of positive um positive things about it and how about your um your elite spinner how do you find that yes that's one uh, i got for free as well um i really like the elite spinner because um during lockdown i really used it a lot um, now I still use it, but a little bit less because I can go on the ice as well. Um, and it's really good to um, have a good straight body, air position for on the ice. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's really yeah, good. I've heard a lot of really um, positive things about the Elite Spinner. I mean, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people have them. So yeah, um, they do, they look great. Um, so, someone, Lily's saying, you're my favorite skater and your spirals are my ultimate, you're, you're my ultimate spiral goals. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, what was your favorite uh, program? Um, I think it's my short program from um, Celine Dio. Yeah, so. that's for sure mine. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah that. And you didn't change your programs this year, did you? Um, I have a new program. Yeah, but new free, but you kept the short, right? Yeah, I already had it last year, but I couldn't compete, so yeah. it oh. is. <laughs> you didn't really use it. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, so someone's asking, what size do you wear in Chic Sport? Um, I wear most of it um, 34, and in the crop tops, I wear like uh, 158. Yeah, 158 centimeters, yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, what's your favorite Chic Sport item? Um, the, for this moment, the Desire Hall Sip Top. In yeah. 
in red okay um what color would you like us to bring out if we were going to release a new color um i would like to have a bright green or a bright orange one <laughs> okay <laughs> bright green and bright orange okay i'll see what i can do <laughs> um okay have you ever skated on a lake no never but it is a dream so yeah. maybe this week yeah it's looking i think well obviously in belgium these are even colder than we are here but i was driving today and i saw like a in the middle of a field there was like a, a puddle and it kind of it looked like it had potential to freeze over but i'm not sure if we're going to get just cold enough <laughs> i'll be skating in the middle of a little random puddle and <laughs> Yeah, Kevin doesn't have his skates here in the UK, so if it happens, he's going to be very annoyed because I will be able to ski and he won't. <laughs> um, what's your favourite dress? Um, yeah, from Celine Dion, the pink to... The pink. Yeah, it's a nice one too, I like that. And let me see, someone's asking, what's your favourite jump? We talked yeah. about the triple flip. Okay, um, what do you love the most about skating? Um, skating is all around, you, you have to um, be flexible, you have to have, uh, yeah, you have to be strong, it, it's just an all around sport and I think makes so much more. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know what you think, but I think that I think skating is a bit of an underappreciated sport. Yeah. Uh, and I know in Belgium, obviously, it's not, it's not like football or something like that. I mean, it's not, it's not categorized like that, but actually, you know, where you are at in the sport and obviously like Yorick and Kevin and what you guys achieved for Belgium, you know, is kind of on par with the level of what the Belgium footballers basically are doing and have done. Um, but it's a shame that it's not appreciated uh, a bit more um, than some of the other sports are. Um, when can we expect the Luna spin? <laughs> I don't know what you mean by the Luna spin. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just reading the questions. I don't know. Have you got something, Luna, you've not been sharing with us? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> can you mean? I don't know. Floor Skates is asking this question yeah I don't know okay maybe they're wanting you to create a spin um someone's asking what's your least favorite spin um the flying sit spin flying sit spin um what's your favorite competition you've been to um yeah the olympics for sure and then the worlds in japan yeah I think literally everyone I spoke to has said japan um <laughs> it it's really hard to explain isn't it just like competing in japan it's just like i mean a lot of the countries in the world they do an absolutely amazing job at putting on like the european and the world championships and grand prix and everything like that but it's just not the same as mm -hmm. and it's just like it's just a really really good experience um so i'm just gonna have a quick look again to make sure we haven't missed anything i mean we've got quite a lot of questions, but all very, very similar ones. Um, someone's asking if you're going to be doing an Instagram takeover soon. We can maybe arrange that for some time that suits you, Luna, if you're up for doing another takeover, and then everyone can ask you <laughs> another bunch of questions again. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think we've covered pretty much everything. I think we've got... Um, someone asked on how old you were when you went to the olympics but you were 18 right 18 at your first olympics yeah so okay i think we'll uh finish up with the questions otherwise i don't think it's gonna stop but it's been so nice to have you on luna and thanks for giving us your time and i hope everyone's enjoyed having a chat with you and yeah lots of luck in um the holland in the challenge cup in a couple of weeks and i hope that fingers crossed that worlds will all go ahead and we'll have a normal training summer to prepare for the olympics i hope i wish you all the best and yeah lots of 
success and healthy and you know keep fighting because we love watching you and we love having you as a part of the chic sport team so thank you for that too and yeah. inspire leggings when they come in they'll be on their way <laughs> <laughs> finally um but yeah as soon as we get them in we'll get them sent to you but thanks a lot for joining us luna and i will yeah chat to you soon yeah i really enjoyed it as well thank you you're welcome bye bye